Welcome to this playlist about computer science fundamentals with uh, Python. In this series, I'm going to show you how you can use Python to learn the computer science basics and the basics of automation, of course, because this is going to be the introduction series to our video courses about different types of um, different types of automation, such as Unreal Engine automation, the bot creation, and so on. So let's dive right in and check out what we're going to do. In this first video, we're going to set up our system. So it doesn't matter if you're on Windows, on Mac OS or Linux, we're going to cover all three of them um, and the setup there. So the setup will be the, basically the same, but I'll note differences whenever they appear. So I'm going to work on Mac OS here, as you've probably seen on the navigation bar. It doesn't matter what system you're working on, there are small differences, but it's really not that important. I'll show you how to do it right now. So what we're going to do here is we will use VS Code as our code editor. And this is because it's quite simple and it, it's very versatile and dynamic. So you can download packages to increase your productivity and things like that. It's also very easy to install and quite easy to get started. It's for free, so that is not a problem either. And we can use Python really nicely here. And as you can see, we can also execute the Python files in our internal terminal. And it's really important to start with because it's super easy. And we're going to talk about the PowerShell and commands prompt on Windows, as well as the terminal on Linux and Unix operating systems like Mac OS. So um, yeah, but to start with, we'll use the internal terminal because it's just much easier and much nicer to do because yeah, it's not a lot of effort and you don't need to know how to navigate and stuff like that. I'll create a different video for the terminal operation or the terminal navigation and running Python scripts there and creating folders and stuff like that. For now, we just want to focus on the script itself, on learning Python, learning the basics and not really focusing on doing a lot of terminal stuff. As I've mentioned, I'll create a different video and I'll link it in this video here. So you can go ahead and check that out. I hope I can keep every video between like 10, 15 minutes. So it's not too much information in one session, but it's also interesting to you to keep going with it and maybe do the same thing I do, set up your computer and then later uh, code as I do and do all the lectures I'll give you as a as an addition to the videos itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you some elements in each video. So I'm going to show you how you can do, for example, loops, condi if conditions. And this is really, as you can see, this is really a very basic introduction course or series here. And then we're going to show uh, you how you can open files, work with files, extract data, write data, do some th stuff in the web with requests and everything like that. So we'll go from, from basically nothing to getting you started with automation using Python. All right, in this very first part here, uh, as I've explained to you already, we're going to use VS Code. So let's go ahead and first install Python. For Unix-based systems, Python is already reinstalled. So maybe you want to update Python or install another version. But what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, show you how you can do exactly that. So let me switch over to my browser window. And as you can see, I've just Googled install Python like you would do if you want to know something, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to the downloads page of our, the python.org. And here you can see it's super simple to install, for example, for its Mac OS. Just download it or install it with uh, Homebrew. Same on the Linux based systems. Um, yeah, it's basically super, it's, it's just super easy. Just do it. One thing to note on Windows is that there's one option in the installation setup window. And as you can see here, there's one thing to note when installing Python on Windows, and that is what most people forget. So really take care of that. If you're on Windows, you will get an installation window like this here. So you can see the installation window and you will have to install it now. But before you do that, make sure that this add Python, whatever version you're installing, it might be 3.7, but just go with the latest version 3.8, add Python 3.8 to path. And what a path is, 
will be covered in the section, the lecture about terminals that I'll again link in this video so you can switch over it right now and get more information about how to use a terminal and what a path is and stuff like that. But for now, we just want to click this checkbox to add the Python to the path because otherwise the terminal won't find the Python executable and then we won't be able to call Python inside of our terminal, which will not allow us to start Python programs, right? So make sure you do that. After we've done that, we want to install Visual Studio Code. And what we can do here again is just go to the browser, type VS Code, and we will instantly get this VS Code download page. And if we go on the download page for Visual Studio Code, we can see that it's the same pattern. So we get the download button, the big download button, and just download it and install it. That's, that's not a problem or shouldn't be a problem for whatever version you have. And as you can see here, if I click on the arrow down, we also have different versions for different platforms. And for Linux system, we either have Debian or RPM. Um, so just go for your platform. And if you need something else, just do other downloads as well. And once we've installed that, we can then open it up. And what I did here is I created a setup folder and that's just a folder I use to keep track of the files we do in this setup video. So what you can do is you can click on file and then open in order to open a file or a folder. And as you can see here, if I go back to um, ZOA, which is the School of Automation, um, I have this very first session, this very first lecture in here, which is going to be about setup. And in here I have two files. I have a config.json file and a hello world pi. And I just want to open that folder by not selecting anything. If I click open here, it will select and open the window. And here we can see that the two files, the JSON file is completely empty. I just did that because I want to show you these really nice highlighting, these really nice icons you can see here. So you can have a quick view and really instantly see what kind of type of file that is. Going back to my Python file, the only thing I wrote here is what you probably saw before if you have uh, done something or, or just looked at some code snippet of Python, is just printing hello world, which will kind of write an output to your terminal. So if we start that, as you've seen before, by doing run Python file and terminal, we will see that hello world is being printed. So given back from the terminal to you uh, as an output. All right, so we've installed Python and we've installed the VS Code Editor. One thing we want to do in order to make sure that we can work without any problems is we want to install a package. And you have this package manager, this extensions manager here on the left-hand side on VS Code. So just go there and type Python in the session here. And what we want to do is we want to just install this Python for VS Code element, which is included in this Python extension for Visual Studio Code from Microsoft. And here you can see it has a really good ratings and everything. So let me close that terminal here. And then we can see that it has a lot of features like uh, using the Python versions, different application basics for, for web servers and stuff like that. So this is a big package we will use later many times. And if you install it, you need to do a reload. So let's do that here. What we get when you finish installing the Python extension is this really nice overview of getting started. So what we can do is we can do creation of folders, uh, Python files or Jupyter notebooks with just a single click. And this is really handy. So let's create a new Python file. And as you can see here, it created a new file that already has this hello world content. So it's the same I showed you earlier with the hello world.py and it's untitled at the moment. So if we close it down, it will, it will disappear. So we now need to save it before we do anything. So let's save that. I'll hit command and S for saving and I'll call it hello world two. Okay. So now you can see the file is saved. And if you again click on that and run Python file and terminal, we can again see that we get the hello world output. We're all set up now for Python development on our system, in my example for, for uh, macOS, but it's the same for Linux. And if you keep track of that 
element in your Windows installation, which is going to be, let me show you again. If you keep track of that add Python to parts element, you shouldn't have any problems installing Python on your system, on Windows system. Okay, so make sure to check that box here. Once we've done that, we can now switch over to do some Python basics, which will be covered in the next lesson. Let's talk a little bit about some differences between Python and other languages. So why do we use Python? The advantage with Python is that it's super easy to learn because it has a really nice and readable syntax. So syntax is the kind of written language of your scripting language or programming language. And for Python, it kind of reads like English if you know a little bit about it. And that is really easy to start. And we do that because in the start, we want to learn and focus on the logic and not the syntax, which is the kind of the text. If you focus on the logic instead of the syntax, it will be super easy for you to later switch between different languages or even kind of go away from Python if you want to, but I'm pretty sure you won't um, because it's just a super nice language and it's very extensible and it has a lot of application fields so it's really really good in addition to that it's kind of the language that is most popular at the moment and it has the biggest growth so if you are familiar with python and you can do automation and you maybe can do something else like data analytics or something like that it's super easy to find a job as well and do some side projects and, and contract work and stuff like that so python is really the go-to language Another interesting thing about Python is that it's dynamically typed. This is really good for the beginning because typing in languages makes sure that you have less errors because if you, for example, if you have a container and you throw a text into that container and you expect that container to have a text in it, but you throw in a number, which is possible in Python, but not, for example, Java, then you will get an error on runtime if you try to, for example, convert that text into a number because there already is number in it, right? So dynamically typed languages like Python or JavaScript are really good to learn and really good to understand and quickly develop something. Rapid prototyping is really good, but for fault tolerant and maybe even more performant applications, you need that layer of typing on top of that. But you can add that later on in Python and JavaScript as well, with TypeScript or typing in Python and that is not a problem, but learn the basics first and learn how to use it. And dynamically typed languages are much easier to pick up than typed languages because you don't have all the overhead with, with knowing what type it is, what kind of type you have to put there. And even for specific classes, for example, in Java, you need to have like really long strings of typing that you need to search online or get from documentation or something like that. And we can do that later on as well. Um, we can we can look into that as well. Just like many languages, Python also has a package manager. And a package manager is really important once you need more extensive functionality and, and maybe even some additional features in your code base. So maybe you need to do HTTP requests, but don't want to use the Python internals, which are quite complex when compared to, for example, uh, the request library and other libraries and frameworks to create web servers and, and backends and things like that. That is all stuff you will import or install separately, which will make your life a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to use PyPI, which is the, the package library and repository of the Python ecosystem. And we can use pip to install it. And pip comes with Python as well. Um, maybe we need to do a separate installation on that. For example, on Windows, there might be some additional installation, but in most cases or in mostly all cases, PyPI or PIP more likely, which is the terminal uh, library, the terminal edition that you can use to install the packages is already installed. So let's go to our terminal in our uh, VS Code window and type PIP. And if we do that, we should have some information here about how to use pip to install, for example, a package. And what we can do here now is we can type pip install and for example, requests, which is the special request library. I have that already installed, but we'll use that later. So you can see, also see that there is a new version so you can upgrade pip directly from Python. And we can just copy that code, for example, and upgrade pip here that's what i'm 
that is what I will do for now. So we have the latest version running and I can exactly tell you what is going to happen here. As you can see, if it installs something, we get a, a progress bar and everything. And now we have the latest version of pip install. Clear is a command to kind of get rid of all of your content in the terminal, which is also important. All right, this is it for the first lesson of this series. So what we did is we installed Python on our system. We installed VS Code in our system, installed some extensions, and now we're ready to get started with the basics of learning how to use Python for automation and the computer science basics as well.